two weeks before the the day of AI, um, sponges must be introduced. So the sponge contains progesterone, um, and what that does is it will synchronize the heat of the O. So once those sponges are removed, we need to remove them two days before AI. So once they're once they're pulled or removed, and um, the yo then starts to starts to come into heat. Um, Brian will also be administering PMSG, so that's simply a hormone to um, to ensure that the yo's will will have a decent crop of lambs. And so then it's it's the yo's ready ready to be AI'd on on day 14. So the whole process starts on day one with sponging, day 12 with sponge removal, and day 14 with with the actual AI itself. This is an artificial vagina. It's basically made up of a latex liner and it's filled with warm water and air and the idea is when the brand goes up to serve the O instead of inserting the O's vagina he insert into this artificial vagina and the semen will be collected uh, in this plastic sheet here down to the tube. Solitary obedience at it. The semen is run down the sides there. Good collection. Take one. Stop the semen. Place on the slide. Really good semen. It's top quality semen. About one mil, so it's as you can see the deep colour, the deep milky colour. It's quite concentrated. It's five out of five, so I can dilute that at least one to ten. So I can dilute it down to ten mil. And that ram will easily cover about 50 euros, 50, 60 euros. This is freshly made dilute that was made up this morning. Uh, set at 35 degrees Celsius at that body temperature. Yeah. So we do Make sure that the pet is clean before we add anything in. It's roughly one to ten at that point. When I do it this stage now, I'll check it again. See what it looks like under the microscope. Diluted down is still really good quality semen. You could actually dilute it probably up to 15 mil. It's still quite strong, so that, that round would easily do um, 70 80 O's. Right, so the O here is um, clipped and surgically prepared. Um, we make a small incision on the left and a small incision on the right. Which is a, a 10 millimeter um, show car. That's what we use to make the incision on the left hand side. That's the side that the scope will go through. We're going on this side, from the skin. Insert roughly so a couple centimetres in front of the other. Okay. And the goat's blunt. It goes in quite, quite easily. There's a sharp point on it, so it penetrates the skin and the muscle very, very easily. Very little bleeding. We use a 5 millimetre on the right. That's the side that the AI gun will go through. And again, it's a blunt, blunt incision and there's no bleeding. The left hand side is the side that the scope goes in, so the scope is connected to a light source, so effectively it's a mini camera. So going to the left hand side, that's the side we use, that's what we use to visualise the room inside. So, um, and the right hand side obviously then is for, for the AI gun. So the scope is in here now. We use some gas, you see the pedal here, of my foot. The pedal here, that's, we use some gas to displace um, the stomach and intestines and the bladder out of the way so to create a bit more space and a bit more room inside so we can actually visualize what we want to see which is the one. The eye gun then goes in on the right hand side. And I'm using the probe on the tip of the eye gun to move the bladder from one side. The uterine horns then are moving into position. So we generally inject the semen, there's, there's two uterine horns, so we inject semen into the left and the right side. So I'm now 
injecting into the left side. About 0.1 mil of semen. We've gone in there now. Moving out of that now. Moving on to the right hand side. Again, needle has gone in there now. That's 0.1 mil of semen. That is the right hand side. As you can see, it's the tip of the needle. Short needle, about 5 millimeters. That's it. Very small little um, area there, you can see where, the, where it's gone through and that can be up itself. There's no need for a stitch or anything. Just a bit of blue spray, a bit of elamycin spray, antibiotic spray, and she'll get a long acting antibiotic as well. And that's it. Working with uh, farmers like Brian through the Sheep Ireland CPT um, gives us a great chance to collect commercial data on, on the pedigree rams being used uh, across Ireland. Um, so here today we will be uh, using six different rams, um, mainly Belfair, but we'll also be using Texel and Suffolk. So to get these rams into, into flocks like Brian, um, our, our aim is to, to mate the rams with 100 joes across the CPT program. So that volume of commercial data really uh, really helps us to increase the accuracies in those rams and hopefully to, prove, um, to, to, to further prove their genetic evaluations. These are all high index rams that we use in CPT, so they're high on the replacement index, and that's our main focus. So our hope is that by proving the rams and increasing the accuracies here in the CPT, that we can then go further uh, down the line to promote and use of those rams um, to pedigree breeders themselves to try and spread the genetics to, to other commercial farmers in Ireland. I got involved with in CPT uh, last year, um, part of my reasoning behind um, joining up. I can have um, a more condensed lambing with with the old lambing down over a short period. Uh, as a result, then I can get uh, focus the labour on that that time of the year. Uh, another reason for for joining up was to um, hopefully try and increase the genetic merit of of my own yos that I that I'm keeping here in the farm for breeding. Um, the, the CPT program uses the top five star rams from each breed, so. Uh, hopefully I can increase on, on my own star ratings within my, my um, mature growth block um, by partaking in, in the programme.